What comes to mind when you hear the word psychopath? A cold-blooded serial killer or a charming, manipulative individual in a corporate suit? Psychopathy, a term that sends shivers down our spines, is not just limited to the realm of crime dramas. It's a real and pervasive phenomenon. It's a serious personality dysfunction, but not a personality disorder in diagnostic manuals. Psychopathy is common among criminals, but not all psychopaths are criminals. Imagine a person with a glib, superficial charm that captivates you, coupled with a grandiose sense of self-worth. They exude confidence, perhaps even arrogance, and they know exactly how to command a room. But beneath that charismatic facade lurks a more sinister reality. This individual is a pathological liar, weaving intricate webs of deceit without batting an eyelid. They're cunning and manipulative, turning every situation to their advantage, often at the expense of others. But that's not all. Delve deeper and you'll find an emotional abyss. They show a lack of remorse or guilt, a callous disregard for the feelings of others. They're emotionally shallow. Their warm and charming demeanor merely a mask hiding their true, cold indifference. Their lifestyle is equally unsettling. They exhibit a need for stimulation, a proneness to boredom, leading them to seek thrill and excitement, often through harmful means. They lead a parasitic lifestyle, using and abusing others for their benefit with no regard for the consequences of their actions. And finally, they display a range of antisocial traits, from poor behavioral controls to early behavioral problems, juvenile delinquency, and even criminal versatility. About 1.2% of U.S. adult men and 0.4% of U.S. adult women are considered to have clinically significant levels of psychopathic traits. Such individuals are outliers in our society. Psychopathy is concentrated in prison populations, rising to around 15 to 25%. Psychopathy isn't limited to individuals alone. What if we told you that psychopathic traits can be found in the very institutions that govern our lives? Institutions, much like individuals, can exhibit traits of psychopathy, leading to what we call institutional psychopathy. This concept extends the characteristics of individual psychopathy, such as a lack of empathy or remorse and manipulative behavior to an organizational level. The roots of this concept can be traced back to Robert Hare's groundbreaking work on psychopathy. Hare developed the Psychopathy Checklist, a tool used to identify psychopathic traits in individuals. It is possible to take this a step further, adapting the traits arising from his checklist to look into entire organizations for institutional psychopathy. Let's unpack some of the key manifestations of institutional psychopathy. First, there's lack of empathy. In this context, it refers to institutions ignoring the well-being of their employees or stakeholders. They may prioritize profits or unconscionable objectives over the welfare of the people who make up or are affected by the organization. Next is manipulativeness. This could involve an institution engaging in deceitful practices for profit or advantage. They may mislead stakeholders or the public in order to achieve their goals without any regard for the truth or the potential harm to others. Irresponsibility is another hallmark. Institutions might fail to uphold their social or environmental responsibilities, causing harm to communities or the planet. This could range from neglecting to implement sustainable practices to outright violations of laws and regulations. Finally, there's impulsivity, characterized by an institution making rash decisions without considering the long-term consequences. These hasty choices can lead to instability and even disaster, both internally and externally. These traits of institutional psychopathy can have far-reaching implications on society, the environment, and individuals. They can contribute to financial crises, environmental disasters, and widespread societal harm. It's a sobering reminder that the actions of institutions can have a profound and lasting impact, for better or worse. These traits can have far-reaching implications on society, the environment, and individuals. Institutional psychopathy is not a monolith. It comes in many forms. 
Just as there are many faces to an individual psychopath, so too are there different manifestations in institutions. Let's delve into some of these complex and often elusive aspects. Firstly, institutional gaslighting. This is when an organization manipulates its members into doubting their own valid experiences or perceptions. It's akin to the psychopath's trait of cunning manipulation, only this time, it's at a larger scale affecting not just one person but potentially hundreds or thousands. Then we have institutional racism. This is when an organization, consciously or unconsciously, discriminates based on race. The institution becomes psychopathic when it refuses to acknowledge such practices, displaying a lack of empathy and remorse. Next up, institutional narcissism. This is when an organization becomes so self-absorbed that it neglects the needs and concerns of its members or stakeholders. It's the grandiose sense of self-worth we see in individual psychopaths magnified to affect an entire institution. Institutional avoidance is another face of this issue. It's when an organization consistently evades addressing problems or concerns, mirroring the psychopathic trait of irresponsibility. Then we have institutional paranoia. This is when an organization operates under constant suspicion and distrust, creating a toxic environment. It's akin to the psychopath's need for stimulation, always on the lookout for perceived threats. Now look at institutional codependency. This is when an organization fosters unhealthy relationships, where members or stakeholders rely excessively on each other to fulfill their codependent devious roles. It's a parasitic lifestyle, but at an organizational level. Institutional denial is when an organization refuses to accept responsibility for its harmful actions, echoing the psychopath's failure to accept their own actions. Finally, institutional insightlessness. This is when an organization lacks self-awareness and fails to understand the impact of its actions on others. It reflects the emotionally shallow nature of individual psychopaths. These are just some of the faces of institutional psychopathy. Each one is a thread in a complex web that weaves together myriad detrimental behaviors. It is often difficult to see into or untangle. Institutional psychopathy can have disastrous effects, but what exactly are we talking about? Let's look deeper. When we speak of institutional psychopathy, we are referring to a phenomenon where an organization as a whole displays traits typically associated with individual psychopaths. This can include a lack of empathy, manipulative behavior, irresponsibility, paranoia, deviousness, and impulsivity. Now, when these traits manifest at an institutional level, the consequences can be far-reaching, often leading to significant harm. For instance, consider the financial sector, an organization driven by a singular focus on profit with little regard for ethical considerations can engage in reckless practices that lead to financial crises. The 2008 global financial meltdown is a stark example of this. Banks and financial institutions, driven by greed and short-term gains, indulged in risky lending and investment practices, leading to a crisis that almost brought down the global economy. Then there's the environmental impact. Corporations with a lack of empathy for the environment can cause devastating environmental disasters. For example, oil companies that prioritize profits over safety can result in oil spills that not only damage marine ecosystems, but also impact the livelihoods of communities that depend on these ecosystems. But the effects of institutional psychopathy are not limited to financial crises or environmental disasters. They seep into the very fabric of our society, leading to widespread societal harm. Organizations that lack empathy can perpetuate systemic injustices, leading to phenomena like institutional racism or institutional gaslighting. These practices can marginalize entire communities, causing long-term societal harm that is often difficult to reverse. And let's not forget the impact on the individuals within these organizations. Employees working in such environments can experience significant psychological distress, leading to burnout, depression, and other mental health issues. The damage is widespread, affecting not just the immediate stakeholders, but society at large. It's a ripple effect, where the actions of a single organization can send shockwaves through our economies, our environments, and our societies. But remember, while the concept of institutional psychopathy is intriguing, it's essential to approach it with caution. 
it's crucial to base such assessments on rigorous research and evidence. After all, organizations, unlike individuals, can change. They can learn, adapt, and most importantly, they can do better. While the concept of institutional psychopathy paints a grim picture, there's a silver lining. If we take a step back, we can see that the personality of organizations are not necessarily cast in stone. They can be more amenable to change. It's in surrounding and internal structures that can bring change that we find our silver lining. So how do we combat institutional psychopathy? The answer lies in structural and cultural changes within organizations. Businesses can gradually change to foster an environment of empathy and responsibility, one that values long-term stability over short-term gains. This is not a simple task. It's not impossible either. A potential strategy is to shift the focus from profit to people. This means prioritizing the well-being of employees and stakeholders over financial gain. By doing so, organizations can naturally reduce manipulative behaviors and impulsivity, two defining traits of institutional psychopathy. Organizations can and should hold themselves accountable for their actions, perhaps through shareholder and regulatory feedback. This involves accepting responsibility for any harm caused and taking concrete steps to prevent recurrence. Transparency is key here. It serves not only as a deterrent for irresponsible behavior, but also as a tool to rebuild public trust. Organizations should invest in employee education and training to identify psychopathic behavioral traits, which can then be fed back to higher management levels or to regulators. By fostering an understanding of ethical behavior, businesses can prevent the development or continuation of psychopathic tendencies. However, the battle against institutional psychopathy doesn't stop at the organization's door. Society as a whole needs to play its part. This includes regulatory bodies setting stricter guidelines and penalties, consumers making more informed choices, and investors holding firms accountable for their actions. Finally, it's important to remember that change takes time. It's a slow, deliberate process, often met with resistance. But with perseverance, the transformation from a psychopathic institution to a responsible one is achievable. The journey to combat institutional psychopathy is long and arduous, but not impossible. Institutions do not operate in a vacuum. Individual psychopaths may walk away from feedback or end up in prison but organizations cannot easily opt out of feedback or regulatory pressures. And it's in the constant scrutiny, feedback and pressures to maintain high standards that we may find our silver lining. Change is possible, and it starts with awareness and understanding. Let's take the next step together. So how does individual psychopathy stack up against institutional psychopathy? The dance between individual and institutional psychopathy is a fascinating one. On one hand, we have the individual psychopath, characterized by traits like superficial charm, manipulativeness, and an alarming lack of empathy or remorse. These are people who may seem charismatic and persuasive, who can lie without blinking an eye, and who may live a parasitic lifestyle, hopping from one short-term goal to the next. On the other hand, we have institutional psychopathy, an even more troubling phenomenon. This is when an entire organization exhibits psychopathic traits, such as a lack of empathy towards employees or stakeholders, manipulative behavior for profit or advantage, or making impulsive decisions without considering long-term consequences. It's like a hive mind, the collective actions and attitudes of an organization reflecting the disturbing traits we associated with individual psychopaths. But here's where things get interesting. While individual psychopaths can be more resistant to change, organizations cannot simple walk away. They can be held accountable, can be restructured, and can be pressured to change their ways, else face being shut down or they implode due to their own unconscionable behaviors. None of this is easy. It's a complex issue that can have far-reaching effects on society, the environment, and individuals but the possibility for change, for improvement, is there. Whereas individual psychopaths may be difficult or impossible to reform, institutions have the capacity for change, or can be made to change. They can adapt, learn, grow, and improve. So while the traits of individual and institutional psychopathy may be eerily similar, 
their trajectories necessarily the same. This is a call to action. We need to recognize and address psychopathy, not just in individuals, but also in the institutions that wield considerable influence over our lives. Psychopathy, whether in individuals or institutions, is a complex issue that requires our attention and understanding. As we wrap up, remember that understanding psychopathy, both in individuals and institutions, is the first step towards addressing it. It's a fascinating journey we've been on, from the dark alleys of individual psychopathy, characterized by traits like glibness, grandiosity, and a lack of empathy or remorse, we've journeyed into largely uncharted seas of institutional psychopathy, where the same traits may manifest on a grander scale. We explored how organizations can display a lack of empathy, manipulating circumstances for profit, acting irresponsibly, and making impulsive decisions that fail to consider long-term consequences. We've seen how these traits can have devastating impacts on society, the environment, and individuals. It's a sobering realization, but an important one. But don't be disheartened. Remember, knowledge is the first step towards change. We've demystified psychopathy, stripped it down to its bare bones, and examined it under a magnifying glass. Now, it's your turn to take this knowledge, explore further, and apply it to your own life and community. Are there organizations around you displaying these traits? Are there systemic issues that need to be addressed? Remember, organizations, unlike individuals, can undergo structural and cultural changes. The potential for positive change is immense. Also, it's worth noting that while the concept of institutional psychopathy is compelling, approach it with caution. Mistakenly, labeling an organization as psychopathic can have significant implications. Such assessments should be based on rigorous research and evidence. Institutional psychopathy is a complex issue, with facets like institutional gaslighting, racism, narcissism, avoidance, paranoia, codependency, denial, and insightlessness. It's a vast field awaiting further exploration and understanding. Knowledge is power. Use it to make a change. Until next time, continue to question, learn, and evolve.